Hello, and welcome to the first in a series of audio recordings uh, assembled and presented podcast style to you, the listener. My name is Keith Carberry, technically your host, um, officially your host, uh, and I'm going to be shoveling at you just just a bunch of stuff that I thought of. This isn't some fancy podcast. I didn't go to podcast school. I went to the school of hard knocks where we learned the difference between types of doors, what what a wall is and what it's not, other ways of telling the difference between surfaces. And that's the sort of podcast this is. Um, so if you don't like uh, me telling you that this desk... That's not even real wood. That's composite. That's not... It looks like a dark wood. It looks like a stained cherry, but it's just composite. It's not... It's a garbage nothing. And that's what this show is. It's... (laughs) It's composite. This is the composite wood of podcasts. Welcome to the first episode. I've got for you an interview uh, with several of my good friends. Um, I've got a bit or two. Um, I've got some music, hopefully. Uh, do I have music? Am I gonna? T- that's post production. I don't even know if I'm gonna get there. But I'll throw. I'll. You'll find. You'll. It, there's. There, here's. Uh, here's Andy Short. I'm sorry. My girlfriend just came in and she dangles chains from herself. Like a like a uh, like a Marley thing, like a Jacob no, Marley I think thing. It's, it's more like a, I don't know. You know those rare birds that make sounds that you can hear miles away. Like I'm, I don't know. I I don't know the bird specifically, but I can name a bird. Is it like a macaw? It's kind of like a macaw. It's kinda, so your girlfriend's kind of like a macaw. Do you guys live together? Well, it's, no. I think it's. I mean, she comes over sometimes. I think it's a signaling mechanism so that. People know where she is. Okay. She's very clumsy. Right. Like in yeah. case she trips and falls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So someone can know, oh, the sound stopped. Better go help. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's not, you she know. doesn't fall and then jangle, jangle, jangle. She's jangling all day long. It's when, it's when there's a silence that people know. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think so. I don't really, I didn't design the system that she's currently where using. Where are the chains doubles, hang from? Are they just draped all around the body? It's, I think it's like a key thing. Like on on a keychain, like for like, because I was thinking maybe bracelets, maybe a necklace, maybe yeah. You know, Keith, I don't, you know, I don't know. Have you right, not do you want to talk to her? Girlfriend? Why don't you talk to her instead? No, you know what? I don't want to talk to her. I want to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Jesus I don't, Christ. To be fair, I don't not want to talk to her. You stay away from her. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me in, let me introduce the podcast. I don't know how to do this. I've never done it before. I've never introed uh, this podcast because it's new. Um, it's your rodeo, bud. This is my rodeo. Like, I better fucking stick this landing or else I'm canning the whole thing now. <clears throat> Hi, everybody, and welcome to... The- <clears throat> oh, my God. Welcome to the fucking <laughs> ruined pilot. Uh, welcome to the first ever episode or the sample episode or the pilot episode of this podcast. Um uh, I, I I really wanted to make a podcast where I could kind of do whatever sort of comedy thing that I wanted and not have it seem out of place. So I so I have this thing where I can just kind of do whatever I want. And I'm going to start it off with a conversation with my old friend Andy Short. Hi, Andy Short. Hi. Um, I I called you up. I'm surprised that I got a response at all because uh, anybody who knows uh, knows your name through knowing me knows that. Your reputation is one of a flake. Can I make can I make a, a brief defense? You guys uh, off mic once announced that you would never ever split any money with me because you need the money. Well, that was our that was after you had already been been curbed by being a flake. Curbed? Yeah, we kicked you to the curb. It's kind of a violent term, don't you think? I think it is. I think it's appropriately violent for what you did well, to no, I, Wait, You broke our poor little hearts, Andy. I went off to school, Keith. I'm sorry for bettering myself. You didn't go off to school. You went to school in you Boston. You know what? 
I won't. I won't apologize. I won't even fake apologize. Here's, but here's here's why. Here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about mm-hmm. that. I called you. You didn't answer, but you called back pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, you called back in like ten minutes, which is nearly unheard of. Uh, and I asked you if you had heard my voicemail because I like to Andy. I like to leave fun voicemails for people. Uh-huh. And you told me that you don't listen to voicemails on principle. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, is no, I don't do it. Ever? No, because the voicemail is the only pertinent information that I will ever listen to in a voicemail is call me back in some fact. It's all call me back, but wrapped up. You know, Keith, there's a saying, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. All right? A pig. That's all a voicemail is. It's a pig with lipstick? It's a pig with lipstick. Every you might get nicer lipstick. You might put a little tutu on the pig, but it's still a fucking pig. Are you say okay? So your premise now is that a, a voicemail. I have two questions. Number one, a voicemail is a pig with lipstick on, and mm-hmm. and that you don't want to see it. No, I don't. I don't ever want to see that. And you don't the, the ever want to see a pig with I, lipstick. I think in the day and age where we have uh, texting and we have Snapchats. Yeah? Uh, You're saying that you that, want me to Snapchat you pictures of figs with lipstick. Well, whatever. Instagram me and, and hashtag it. I don't know, whatever the fu- however the fuck it works. But in this, it, with all the technology at our disposal where it's just absolutely instant, I think it's almost rude to leave someone a voicemail. It's like being like, oh, I know you uh, don't do anything with your life, so please take take two minutes out of your day to listen to this bullshit that you could just know by looking at the fact that I called you. But I will, I guess, I I guess here's, here's the thing is that I get the voicemails that say, Hey Keith, it's your mom. Call me back. That's infuriating. And I agree there. But when I leave voicemails, I leave a ton of information on them so that you can listen to it and then call me back. And then we're on, we're on the same page already. Keith, what I'm finding out is that I think this podcast is much more profound than you ever imagined in that it's the slow reconciling of a friendship. Is that what's happening? Are Maybe. we reconciling? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we never were unreconciled. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were always mostly fine. Uh, we, you, here's, here's, but here's why I'm hurt. I'm not hurt that you didn't get the... I'm not hurt that you called me and said, no, I didn't listen to your voicemail. Re-explain yourself. I'm hurt because I genuinely think that the voicemails I leave for people are really funny. Ugh. I want you to listen to, if not the one that I just left, do you still have the one that I left like a week ago when you flaked on Kyle and I about two hours after oh, confirming? No. I deleted that one out of shame. Out of shame? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes you just delete them because you're ashamed of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know? I no. Sorry. I, excuse that. Excuse that boom in the background. That's just my girlfriend rudely entering and exiting my room. <laughs> Andy, are you mean to your girlfriend? Don't worry about the sigh that she just audibly gasped. I did hear that. I feel like it was a deserved sigh. Yeah. She's also trying to whisper. Which, if if I'm notorious for flaking, she is notorious for not being able to whisper. <laughs> what is she trying to say to you? I don't even know. I want to hear it. I want to hear this. I can't understand her most of the time. She's originally, she's of Spanish descent, so she has a heavy Latin American accent. I just heard, I just heard what was definitely uh, an American accent. <laughs> Saying that's, that's not true earlier? is what she said. What were we talking about? We, I don't want to get this podcast too off the rails already. There are no rails. This is a railless cast. Um, no, so, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes, most of the time I delete podcasts out of sheer righteous fury. Yeah, of having, um, of having someone that needs to give you information. Yeah, and, uh, s- but sometimes I'm ashamed that I, I, uh, did or didn't do something, mm-hmm. and I don't listen to it for that reason. I think... Like, my parents, for instance, uh, my parents have been trying to get me to get my own car insurance for about six months. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. When my dad calls, that's a, that message goes straight in the trash. Right, because you know what it's about, and you're afraid of it. Exactly, mm-hmm. because what it what it means is like seven hundred dollars that I don't have. See, that's something that I can understand too. I can understand the fear of facing some sort of weird adult consequence. Oh, now I have to start. What I don't understand is here's. The, Here's the real problem: is that you're not very good at getting back in touch with people. I feel like you're uh-huh. deleting these voicemails and then forgetting that you need to contact someone. 
Yeah, that definitely happens a good amount. Yeah, which I I feel like this explains a lot of stuff now because I will when I almost always text, but I will call people who are my friends, and if they don't answer, then I'll, because Andy, when we talk on the phone, we have a good time on the phone. True or false? Mm-hmm. No, I think that's true. That's true. And so when you don't answer, I'll have a good time on your voicemail uh, without you. You enjoy my my pun voicemail. I do enjoy your pun voicemail. Is that? Do you want to do a reenactment of it? Uh, sure, I'll do it right here, here and now. Uh, uh, it's something along the lines of, uh, you have reached Andy Short's voicemail. Please leave a message after the beep, and I'll get back to you shortly. Or in a short in, amount of time, yeah, in a sh- as my in girlfriend a is short. pointing me off mic. I heard it. I heard it was on mic. Sorry, that spiked. It did spike, but it's fine. I can deal. I can deal with that. I can deal with a spike. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a little bit of fun pun humor. Mm-hmm. It's punny. A little bit of yeah. It's definitely punny. It's something that I think anyone can appreciate. It's an all ages voicemail. It is. There's no profanity. Um, I have a friend. It's like just on the border of professional. So like I can get a professional phone call, and I think they. You know, they might make a judgment on I, me. You know what? I bet can't. someone that works in an office thinks that's the funniest thing they've ever heard. Well, that's that's the thing. It's also like dad humor, mm-hmm. so I'm not too worried. You know? Yeah, and they don't let you be. Um, they don't let you be in an office unless you're a dad. Like I have a friend who has a voicemail where it's like, "Hey, you've reached John's voicemail. I'm probably doing something really important. Uh, I'll call you back." And it's just, it's the worst. That sounds bad. See, that's also condescending. It's condescending. And if you know this kid, he's never doing anything important. No? What does he do? What does he do? What does this kid do? He works, okay, he works at Starbucks like a scumbag. Okay. Which I can say because I worked at Starbucks. I also worked at Starbucks. They're all scumbags. And and I've fucking overcame it because it's like a, Starbucks is like a, it's like getting mono. Everyone does it for a couple months and then you get rid of it. Mm Mm-hmm. And generally it happens because right. you started making out with someone. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, you get to second base and all of a sudden you're in a fucking black polo and green apron. Boom, you're flipping 120 degree lattes like it's no, there's no tomorrow. Um, Andy, I'm going to say I, 120 degrees sounds a little cold for me. It is a little cold. That's on the cold side. But if people don't want their latte super hot, mm-hmm. then you'll, that's how you'll do it. I'm going to say that the standard I, is between 150 and 170 degrees Fahrenheit. I had a woman insist on a 190 degree half and half latte, which with the the current machinery at Starbucks is nearly impossible. Uh, yes, uh, and that's, she wanted it to be entirely foam. That's impossible. Well, uh, and once it starts getting that hot, it starts like fucking bubbling like a monster. But it's not foam; yeah. it's just like horrible bubbles. I mean, in trying and and I had like the, when this woman came through, I had a line. Right. So like I. Th- I, like I can't I go straight to Holocaust Keith like that's I go straight to like this that is you're level. saying this is your retail nightmare yeah oh my god and I consider I Starbucks to be retail <laughs> it it's I'm not it's not food service enough to be food service it is mm. definitely maybe this is because the Starbucks that I worked at was in a Barnes and Noble but it's it's retail it's guessed up anyway so I, I so yeah this kid he does, he does Starbucks he does uh, community college which good for him yeah you know, good for him. Yeah, bootstraps. Bootstraps. So you guys call him? You call him Johnny Bootstraps? He takes like a classist a qu- a semester. A classist semester? Uh, Lots ridiculous. of really bougie classes. He's going he's he's to graduate in like two. <laughs> White Wine 302? I mean, granted, this kid's probably, probably I would say he's on, he's on one of my best friends. Okay. So I don't feel terrible about just tearing him apart publicly. Sure. This is not, um, but, but this is not going to reach his circles. I, I'll probably send it to him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I don't care. One listener um, done. One listener. Andy, you're gonna bike across the country. Why are you doing that? Uh, <laughs> you've mastered. You've mastered the segue. Thank you. I, and don't get me wrong. I fucking I hate it when people call out segways. Yeah. In general. Mm-hmm. But uh, that one was so that one was so poor, I couldn't. It's like it would be like like driving past a car accident, and not even slowing down. That's my style. Anyway, what was your dumb question that uh, was distracting and how blunt it was? 
you're going to bike across the country. Why are you doing that? Ah, yes. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. I will answer now. Um, Go ahead. So, uh, my name is Andy Short. If you're just tuning in. Mm-hmm. Does anyone tune in anymore? Uh, no, they just turn on and drop out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'm doing this thing called Bike and Build, and uh, I don't know, man. You've it's been doing this cool- for a couple years. I, this is my second year, all right? That's, cool I'd jets. call that a couple. Yeah, well, it's exactly a couple. I'll go by the traditional definition of couple. I didn't want to be disingenuous make it sound like I'm some kind of biking fanatic here. Okay, well, so go ahead, non-biking fanatic. Tell us why you're biking across the country. So here's how it started. I, when I worked at Starbucks, obviously a very dark two and a half years of my life. Mm-hmm. Had you gotten over uh, the mono? I, well, not quite. They all, it all coincided. Actually, the uh, true story, the second I left Starbucks, mono cleared right up. Wow. No more mono. And you haven't kissed a girl since. Not one. Um, hey, babe. But, uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> so, <clears throat> I was kind of blustering, uh, about biking across country because I wanted an adventure. You know, I was young back then, Keith. Right. I was a younger How man. How old are you? And are you 25? I am 25. And you're now, talking about yes. when you were 24? Maybe No, probably 22, okay. 23. That's my age. Um, well, the first one. Whatever. Uh, so, God, you're so rude. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you have good things in your future, Keith. Thank I you. Can, I can tell you that. Um, with zero uh, knowledge. Uh, but So I was blustering about it at work, and my friend... And I had no means, right? Mm-hmm. I had no actual way to do that. I knew that I was, I didn't know anything. I couldn't even ch- change a flat tire yeah. for, for, for Christ's sake. Can I tell you this? I've so, known you for several years. You frankly weren't that good at even walking. No. Uh, no, 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 no. I was bumped into things all the time. I was also fat. Mm-hmm. So fat. Um, we'll get to that later. Okay. But uh, so I wanted to bike across country, and my friend was like, oh, this is actually a thing that my friend did they like they carry all your stuff in a van and like you go in a big group so you don't really need to know how to like rebuild a bike from the ground up right and that that took most of the barriers out of the way for me uh because i just wanted to be fed right i was worried about being fed mm-hmm. and my bike breaking down and being stranded forever and being lonely but this way and being lonely uh, which is a, a fear to this day um that lingers uh, but so the it was cool, and so I signed up uh, for a three week run because uh, I got in a little bit late past the deadline uh, when I had heard of it, and I did Maine, Portland, or no Bar Harbor, Maine to New York City, which was like eight hundred thirty miles in three weeks. It's a lot of miles. It's good. It was cool. Mm-hmm. And it was it, you're essentially Keith. And this is as you know, I'm I'm a sober man. Yeah. I don't I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I haven't had any prescribed painkillers in uh, some time. Uh, but it, you're essentially high the whole time. Oh, well, that sounds Cause the nice. Because the way your brain works. Well, your brain's like, ah, this would be, this is so terrible, I have to trick him into thinking that he's high. No, this is, so this is a science that they've discovered where your brain creates happy chemicals when you uh, exercise a lot. How often? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like, like, like high, like. You're saying this isn't like the ayahuasca that I do. No, 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 no. It's a gradual. It's a gradual. I just, I just noticed that for those three weeks, I was happy and I'll never be happy again. You know that feeling? Mm Mm-hmm. Is your girlfriend still sitting next to you? Yep, she's right here. (laughs) Uh... (laughs) I can't even tell you how legitimately sad she is and how this will probably be a conversation after I leave this podcast. I Here's your out, comedy podcast. I'm kidding. We had that conversation yesterday. Uh, Do you want to talk about it? It is a comedy podcast, and we're having fun with comedy. We are. We're goofballs. Do you want to talk about why you're so sad? She shot lasers through my skull. Um, The... So yeah, so that's the thing, and then I did it, and it was great, and it's for it's like for affordable housing, mm-hmm. uh, which means uh, half the money gets granted to organizations that basically help people that can't afford 
to live uh, in places. Yeah, so it's all for charity. Places. Making uh, you ostensibly a good person. Exactly. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Do you have Do you have uh, like links to give where people can go and help you out if they want to? Keith. Yeah? Do I ever. Oh, my God. Tell me about it. You, re- you ready for this link I'm throwing at you? Yeah. Uh, it's gofundme.com slash Andy2015. Uh, and that, basically, just so you know how the money works, um, I have to raise 4500 bucks uh, just for fundraising, which I have done. Congratulations. And, uh, that link will bring you to a page to donate uh, so that I can, like, you know, uh, not die of dehydration by buying a water back water pack on my back so and so the fundraising right. portion is done and now people can fund you having extra water N- well listen it's important keith yeah. you run out of water and you die that's true water that's is super basic basic oh i'm not i was not being critical i was saying yeah. i was saying please give my friend some water no. So, like, I mean, I just want to be upfront about, like, how the money's being spent. Yeah. Because I don't want people to feel, like, weird about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, the money that would go towards, like, the organization, like, I've raised that. And now I'm raising money so, like, I don't have to be, like, $1,000 in the hole for doing this charity thing I'm doing. Yeah. No, that makes total it's sense. Essentially what it is. And, you know, some people might not feel as good about donating to that as they would otherwise. So that's that's fine. I'm not, like, at the end of the day, like... I'll be okay. Like, I'll be able to do the ride, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just hoping to not, uh, you know, have to... Because those Camelbacks, Keith, do you know how much money they are? Can I guess? The, yeah, go for it. $89. More. $189. Uh, Yeah, around there. A little less. Okay. <laughs> 180 50 A lot of expenses. This is good radio. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Going to Maine to California, two and a half months. Do you? What do you take? Like take a bus back? Do you bike back? Is this cross and no. back? What's wrong with you? What? Are you insane? I don't know. Uh, you take a plane, Keith. Have you heard of this? A plane? <laughs> Are you one of those weirdos that's never been on a plane? No, no, I've been on planes uh, upwards of a dozen times. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd never been on a plane. You don't get out much. No, I I used to go to Florida every year, and that involves two plane trips. That's not that's not like a that's not something I would brag about, Keith. Why is that not? Well, I was a child. I don't. I didn't have any decision making powers. Okay, I'm just saying you probably don't want to be going on the internet bragging about going to Florida. I wasn't. I don't think I was bragging. I was just you know telling you about the planes that I've taken. Mm-hmm. Some of them had some of them had layovers. That that's an even extra plane. I mean, we're we're essentially at a consensus as a culture that Florida is a, just an awful place it's, to be, right? It's the second worst state that I've ever been in. What would you say the first is? Uh, Vermont. Oh, really? Yes. No, Vermont has uh, Vermont has some high highs. I think I went to uh, I went to school in Vermont uh, for one semester, um, and then I decided this is the worst place I've ever been. I have to leave. Yeah, but that was probably just attached to a number of, like, latent psychological factors that were coming into play. No, it was just, like, all the fucking people there are weird. They're all weird. Mm. I mean, did, what did you go to, like, Bennington? Was that it? Went to Castleton. Oh, yeah, whatever. Ten ton. Yeah. Um, no, I, th- it's, uh, I, I would say Vermont is... If you're going to pick a worse state, I mean, you got to go with... you got to go with, like, a... Ohio. Or I've never New been to Jersey. Ohio. I've never been to uh, to uh, Missouri, which is always high on the list of bad states. I've never been to Mississippi, which is another high uh, high. Well, not, not to get political here, but uh... I mean, they'll get it out. Please. <laughs> oh, now I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he'll, uh, maybe I'll just drop you being very worried without any context at the end of the oh episode. God. Yeah, that's like one of those like horror stories you hear where like I tweet like a joke that doesn't land and I'm I I get a felony conviction and can never work again. Yeah, that's always happening. It's always happening. It's really constantly. terrible. So it's all these white people in jail because of Twitter. It's I mean it's the great evening out, Keith. Mm-hmm. 
It's the great evening out the that they've been talking about. <laughs> the culling. <laughs> oh Christ! Uh, all right, Eddie. Is there any other links that you want to give out? Do you have a Do you have an internet presence? Do you still do comedy stuff officially? Yeah, I mean, I do it. So uh, I mean, I'll I'll double plug uh, GoFundMe dot com slash Andy twenty fifteen classic That's, uh, DP for, for my bike and build efforts. Uh, huge help if you can send some uh, as. As Mark Marin would say, shekels my way. Um, and then uh, I don't know. I'm at, I'm at Real Andy Short on the Twitter. I don't. I barely use Twitter. That's true. I have 26 followers. Is that all, really? Yep. Worked really hard for about uh, two and a half days to get more. Didn't work. Stopped. You have 47 followers. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, my Twitter presence has exploded. I bet uh, I bet some of them are from from run button stuff. I'm sure they're bots. These yeah, a lot of these look like look like bots. Um the other thing I'll plug is uh friend me on Xbox Live. I am at Real Andy Short. I don't play games online much cuz I hate uh the people I meet there. So if you're nice, uh send me a little little friend request with a little message that you heard this and uh I'd love to play a game with you sometime. Oh, that's very sweet. I'm glad that I'm glad that you got to talk about your GoFundMe and I hope to have you on another time also. I don't know about this Keith. This was such a pleasure. I'm glad. I just wanna if I could get real with you for a second. Yeah. This was really a a breath of fresh air. Was it? I can breathe again. I'm glad. I was nice to talk to you, and I'm glad that uh, glad that we got to catch up. Yeah, and uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go now and repair the uh, shamble mess that is my relationship after doing this podcast with my girlfriend in the room. Mm-hmm. I've heard that before. Uh, <laughs> you know it, buddy. All right. All right. Take care. Night. Hey, baby. Oh, that Andy Short. What an incredibly particular fellow. Uh, what a guy. What a singular, unique Charming little bird. Um, up next, I've got an interview with my good friend, Ali Akapora. And uh, until then, I've got a commercial break. The first ever run button associated commercial break of all time. Um, so here it is. Uh, uh, paid advertising. I'm crazy about gift box services. I love them. I can't get enough. I've got them all. Nature Box, Loot Crate, Bark Box, Mustard Monthly, Sushi to You, Box Box, Brick Box, Candle Crate, Crate Box. But it's too much. It's starting to be a real pain. And that's why the Container Store is opening up its doors to you. Any box that gets sent to your door gets sent to them. And then you can pick it up at their store at your convenience. It's fantastic. Uh, I can't, I'm at work, but my nature box is getting sent to my house. My sushi to you gets sent to work, but I'm at home. It's, we're done with it. Done with all of that. Now, it all gets sent to the Container Store. It's simple. Just go to their website, enter in the code KEITH7, there's no hidden fees, there's no delivery costs, there's no credit card bill, there's nothing. There's no, all they, <laughs> all they ask is they get to pick one thing from your box. One thing per box, that's it. It's basically free. Just head over to www.containerstore.com, enter in the code, and stop allowing you and your family to be constrained by the rigidness of gift box services. This is a placeholder goof for after the commercial and before I introduce the section with Allie that's coming up. So just think of a bit and put it here. Um, remember to delete this. Uh, the, I'm, I'm, I'm here in this segment of the thing that I do now <laughs> with Allie. Allie, I still, because I knew you for so long without actually knowing you, uh, still sometimes forget that your last name isn't West. It it isn't. That's right. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's Acapora. Yes. Uh, but I always in my head go, Al, yeah, Ali West. <laughs> <laughs> Is that um, a problem? No, that's fine. Okay. And also, so many people don't know that my full name is Alicia. I think. Right. And that's also really funny to me. Do most do people in your real life call you Alicia? Yeah. That's yeah. Weird. Like everyone at work, I introduce myself two people as alicia in like professional settings do you prefer alicia no 
Okay. <laughs> then why? Do you introduce yourself to people? <laughs> but like, no so one's going to be like, oh my god, her name's Allie? That's super unprofessional. No, no, no. But like, if like, I want to be friends with you, I'll be like, hey, I'm Allie. Oh, okay. But Hi, like... I'm Alicia. My friends call me Allie. <laughs> That's what you're saying? Sort of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but why Why not just Allie for everyone? <laughs> I don't you know. You want to create sort of this, this artificial caste system? Sort of. It makes it easier to, like... Catalog the people in yes. your life? Like, oh, yeah. I know that you're not shit because you call me Alicia. Well, it came to a certain point where, like, everyone who knew me through uh, a certain person would call me Allie. Okay. Which person? Sarah. Okay. Uh, my best friend, Sarah. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I felt like I had to cover up that whole thing for this podcast. Right. But <laughs> a friend of mine um, would, like, talk about me as Allie and then introduce me to people as Allie. And that's how I, like, sort of kept track of how I knew people. Okay. But then it, it just is who I am now, I guess. Mm -hmm. It consumed right. you. Right. Like, but, like, if I have a job and I have a name tag, it says Alicia on it. Okay. I don't have, like, a short version of my name. I can't tell people, like, ah, my name's Kay. <laughs> I know. Keith is really hard to nickname. It is hard to nickname. Uh, I was Kiefer for almost my entire childhood. Why? Wait. Why? I don't know. That's my, what my family called me. They called me Kiefer. Wait, really? <laughs> yep. For, until I was, like, 12 or 13. Did they just, like, forget what they wrote on your birth certificate? No, no. That, they like... just call it as a nickname. Kiefer. That's, <laughs> Kiefer. That's, not a, that's not a nickname. That's an entirely different name. I, I didn't know it as even a name until I was, like, 18. I just thought that Kiefer was a fake nickname that my parents came up with for me. <laughs> so the first time you saw 24, you were like, I've never oh seen 24. <laughs> I so, refuse to acknowledge. I refuse to acknowledge blank Sutherland's existence, right? To this day, because he just has like a. Joke I just name. call him. Yeah, I call him Donald Sun. Like the same way that they just call Yoda. Uh, like his his race is just called Yoda species. I call <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland Donald Sun. Great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, Allie, I had people because I knew that I was going to have you on as a guest. I had people. Uh, send me questions that they wanted to ask you or comments that they wanted to give to you and, and that you would be able to answer for them. Oh. Um, so, so I've got one here. Do you mind answering? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Allie, I'm a big fan of your stuff on Stream Friends, and I really love Friends at the Table. I am John Kennedy, a citizen of America, <laughs> but I work and am currently located in London, England. More importantly, I am a single father of a 17-year-old son. The banks here are not like they are back home, and they've frozen my accounts after I received over $1 million in a business deal. They tell me that they will unfreeze my accounts if I can provide them with $1,000. In return for your cooperation, I, I... I'm really embarrassed. I'm pretty sure this is spam. <laughs> I'm, like, almost positive this is a spam email. I, I don't know. That, I, that it seemed super promising. specific at first. Mm. And I got thrown off because I don't normally see spam emails anymore. They just go into my <laughs> spam folder. But this is definitely spam. I don't know. You don't know? He's, he said he really liked Friends at the Table. That's, that's a, true. That's a deep cut, I guess. And Stream Friends. Right. <laughs> no one knows that I'm on Stream Friends. Only super fans know me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you see spam anymore, even? I don't see it ever. I, so I have like a spam folder. Right, yeah. But we and don't go in there. Well, well, I'll look around sometimes. Okay, for what? <laughs> like, uh, how, how are these jerks doing? Right, just to see what's out there. <laughs> have you ever fallen for spam before? No. Have you ever, because you're, you're a couple years older than me. Right. Um, but when I was, I, I've had the internet since I was five, which is was like 1997. Um, okay. and so, when the internet started looking more like it looks today in the early 2000s, I was still like a kid, and there was like a lot of places for me to get into trouble on the internet, like just by not knowing. Like I remember being a kid and like sometimes doing the like 
yeah, fucking play the like do this thing and you'll win an Xbox. Right. Like yeah. uh, being like, I know this is fake, but I might as well. <laughs> I really want that Xbox. Right. So. Like I was young. I was young enough to be to like. I was old enough to know that it was fake, but young enough to be like, but what if this one isn't <laughs> fake? <laughs> I feel like I'd do stuff like that, too, because it would always be like, fill out the survey, and I'd get halfway through the survey, and I'd just feel like, this is too much work, and I'm not right. getting yeah. an Xbox out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the probably the worst thing that I ever did on the internet, like, the biggest trouble that I ever got into on the internet was um, uh, basically accidentally buying a car on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how did you accidentally buy a car? Well, so I was on eBay, and I was probably like looking at toys or whatever. I was very young. I could not have been. If I was older than 10, it was not that much. I was probably younger than 10. Okay. And I I stumbled on like uh, like a, like cars and shit. Like, I, or I probably started seeing really expensive things on eBay and being like, oh, man, I can't believe they have like expensive shit on eBay. Do they have boats? Do they have cars? And looking it up and finding a car that was inexpensive but cool and had, probably it had one of those, you know, reserve not met things that eBay does. Mm-hmm. And me being like, oh, my God, there's people on eBay selling Dodge Vipers for $800. <laughs> and, and I remember telling that to my uncle, being like, there's people on eBay selling cars for like $800. <laughs> That's not even a lot of money for a car. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Uh, and he explained, like, no, this is probably a reserve thing. Like, you probably have to bid over $15,000 for you to even get it. And I'm like, <laughs> nah, Uncle Ron, adult Uncle Ron, I'm pretty sure you're wrong and I'm right. <laughs> Wait, actually, I – did eBay have reserves back then? I think Keith Kidd was right. No, eBay had reserves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, eBay had reserves. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and and he was like, he basically, he very, he sarcastically, uh, I did not pick up on the sarcasm. He basically, he was like, yeah, if you can find, if you can find a car like that on eBay for eight hundred dollars, I'll pay for it. <laughs> no. And so what I did was I found what I thought was a Pontiac Firebird, but okay. what was actually just. The empty shell of what used to be a Pontiac Firebird on eBay for like a two hundred dollars. Okay. And that's... then I was like, "Well, I've got this on lock. It's not my dime." Boom, eight hundred dollars. If it goes over that, then I'm then it's just I don't have to buy it. If it's under that, Ron's paying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won. How'd that work out for Ron? Um, well, Ron didn't. Ron's wallet didn't have to get involved because my my father stepped in uh, and yelled at me, and then told the man, "This kid is not buying your Pontiac Firebird shell. <laughs> not happening. Sorry." Uh, and so that's when I got in trouble on the internet. Mm-hmm. You don't have anything like that. You never. I, actually... you never that happened a very similar thing happened to me once where for some reason i was just using my brother's ebay account mm-hmm. um and i would just bid on things <laughs> and <laughs> i would either <laughs> i would either just like win and ignore the messages or i would like bid on things and lose and it didn't matter and at some point he was just like you have to stop doing this why do you keep doing this <laughs> how much older is he than you um, he is four years older than me. Okay. So you could have been young enough to be to be doing this and he be old enough to have an eBay account right. and money. Yeah. Okay. Well, not even. He was like in high school and I was like in middle school. So really he shouldn't have been on eBay either. Right. Because what was he buying? I had an eBay account when I was, uh, when I was very young, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Buying, I would buy stuff like, uh, I bought a second Nomad on eBay when I was, you know, like eight or nine. What? Yeah, so I have a Sega Nomad, and it's rad. You still have it? Yeah, I still have it. It's great. Oh, wow. Yep, totally works. People exaggerate about its battery life. It's fine. <laughs> it's like an, it's like two hours. It's fine. Okay, yeah. I. That People talk about right. it like it's ten minutes. Oh, well. People are like, oh, it's so short. Like, eh. But it's like, it's expensive because the, the batteries are like D batteries. Oh, but there's a rechargeable okay. battery also. So it's like not... 
it's not an issue. Anyway, what, what did you what did you buy? What were you buying on eBay in middle school? Just like anime figures and bullshit like that. <laughs> so like, like stuff that you're still buying on, on mm-hmm, eBay, just yes. now you can pay for it. Yes. <laughs> did any ever get like shipped to you? No. Because he just never paid for them. No, because, yeah, that payment never went through. I bet he had a really bad eBay uh, r- Yeah, user that's review. why he yelled at me. Because <laughs> he was like, people keep leaving bad feedback. Why do you keep doing this? I get I get so tied up in reviews, though. Like, on eBay or, like, every time I want to buy, like, a small appliance, I will have, like, decided on what I'm going to get, but I'll just read it all of the Amazon reviews on it uh-huh. and then be like, oh, people think that the blades aren't sharp. Knowing that, like, having a vision in my mind of, like, what kind of people are writing uh, Amazon reviews on blenders, but still, like, <laughs> trusting, <laughs> trusting them with, like, <laughs> to have the power over me to, like, make me change my mind when I have already made it. It's the worst. I hate that part about me. Well, that's why That's why I feel like you you went the right direction when you started looking at video reviews <laughs> with lizards. <laughs> yes. Allie found a video review of a blender that fe- heavily featured a lizard eating lettuce. <laughs> that's, that is a true story about me. Yeah, it was very good. <laughs> Okay, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a. T- we'll we'll head out on uh, first. First, we'll head out on any links that you want to give about your stuff. Um. Okay. I I assume that any links that I have are links that are going to be told. Um. So you can find me at. Wait, that was a weird way to say that. You can. Find me... <laughs> <laughs> well, I just know like you're here and Austin's going to be here. So pretend like no one's ever been here. Okay, I'm the first. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can find me at Allie underscore West on Twitter. Um, I am Hella on Friends at the Table, which you can find at friendsatthetable.net. And then I do video game streams sometimes on streamfriends.tv and twitch.tv slash streamfriends. Great. And I've got, a uh, have got one last, one last question for you mm-hmm. sent from a fan. Okay. One weird trick to grow your dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, that was fun, right? We had some laughs. We learned that I'm an idiot with eBay, and then Allie also was an idiot with eBay. And boy, what a thing! I'm a l- <laughs> I got a little bit sick from how fun that was. Um. I've got a couple more minutes of good times planned for you. And uh, then after that, an interview with Austin Walker, which was adjacent to good times. Um, I had a lot of fun. It was just a more somber, <laughs> it was a different sort of thing. Um, was it, though? I don't know. I don't know. We laughed a lot. So it's, it wasn't not funny. But it was different. It was good different. You know when something's different and you're not afraid of it and you're like, I don't fear this and I don't I don't need to attack it or bring it down. Uh, you're just like, this is new and different and I like it and I want to sit next to it and I bet it is uh, comfortable um, as a pillow. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that I'm talking about. So without further ado, uh, the last... Few th- <laughs> last few things. I'm gonna go curl up in a ball uh, with my new different pillow. Hello, you reached me in your shorts voicemail. Thank you for calling. Uh, please leave a message after the beep, and I will get back to you shortly. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey Andy, it's uh, it's Kyle, your uh, childhood friend and former podcast co-host, calling. Um, I guess you're you're not around, but uh, I, I'm I'm pretty excited about this, so I think I'll I'll just leave it on your voicemail so you can you can hear it when you when you get back. But um, as you know, you know I'm I'm having my daughter uh, pretty soon. She's gonna be born um, in just a few weeks, and uh, you know uh, I've been thinking a lot about it. And I'm kind of feeling like 
I think we might like you to be her godfather, you know? Uh, you know, our, our friendship is important to me, and I feel like I, I want you to be a part of my daughter's life. And, you know, I, I want you to be a part of my life continuing. Um, so, yeah, let, let me know what you think. It, it's pretty important to me, and uh, I hope you have... Hope you have a good day. Hope you, you hear this in good spirits. Uh, give me a call back when you hear it. Thank you. Hey, Andy, Andy, Andy. It's your buddy Keith. Uh, just calling to let you know that I know that we share a Netflix account, and that's great. Um, but I have to let you know that you have to stop watching the same episode of River Monsters over and over again, because now the only suggestions that Netflix will give me is that same episode of River Monsters. Uh, thanks. Uh, just knock it off. Bye. Hey, babe, it's me. Uh, just calling to let you know that, um, didn't appreciate your friend calling me a macaw on his podcast when everybody knows I'm a fucking minor bird. So, uh, if you could tell him, or, and, like, maybe next time stick up for me or something, didn't appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Hey, Andy. It's, uh, Kyle again. I was just calling to see if you got my message. Give me a call, uh, when you get this. Thanks. Hello. This is concerning an alleged promotion of your friends regarding our services. While we do appreciate the intent behind said promotion, it must be noted that we neither requested the presentation, nor do we align with the image of the container stores produced by your friend Keith. Mr. Carberry informed us that the most efficient way to contact him would be by sending you a voicemail. We are entirely willing to discuss with him the proper way to represent our brand as the container store. It would be very helpful if you let him know that. Thank you for any time you took to respond to this. Hey Andy, it's your Uncle Al. Um, when you were over last week, did you buy a bunch of... Did you buy a bunch of tissues in bulk on my eBay account? Hey Andy, Keith again. Um, I'm just calling because I noticed that I've got a charge on my eBay account for a bunch of tissues in bulk. Did you do that when you were here last week? Uh, hey Andy, it's Boots Raps Jimmy. Um, I just listened to that podcast you sent me, and it seems like every time you're on a podcast, you take some really unfair shots at me, and then send me the link, and I just wanted to know if you still wanted to be friends? Uh, give me a call back, I guess. I've... Andy, this is the second time we, the Container Store, have called in order to send a message along to Mr. Carberry. While we once believed Mr. Keith J. Carberry would be a respectable operator and friend, it seems that he is entirely willing to continue providing distractions from the real value of the service we provide. Please send this along to him as soon as possible. Thank you again, Andy, your local representative at the Container Store in several locations across the nation willing entirely to help you correct any clumsy disorganization in your own life. And never mind, yeah, this email definitely says care of Andy Short, so could just don't do that. Just don't do that. Andy, it's Kyle. You realize that if I don't hear back from you, I basically have no choice but to make Keith the godfather of my daughter, right? Shit. You realize he's, like, still talking about KOTOR 2? That is not the kind of religious upbringing and guidance I want for my daughter, Andy. Thanks for nothing, shitbird. I just got charged $90 for a sack full of feathers. Thanks for having shitbird. Well, this is a new podcast thing that I'm doing. Does it have a name yet? Uh, I think that the name is... How are you today? Oh, that's a good name. I think it's a I'm nice a, name. That's a good name. Yeah. Um, how are you today? I don't know. I'm doing okay. Yeah. I, uh, it's been a long day. It's yeah. Been... <laughs> it's been... Austin, it's been a long... It's, it's been, been a long, long while. <laughs> Earlier today, I was I was talking to our mutual friend Janine Hawkins, mm-hmm. uh, and I said uh, I started the type, and I said like it's been a long, and I was gonna say like, day, and then I was gonna say like week, and then I was like it's been a while since August, which was yeah. <laughs> the last like it's it's still happening. Like not my whole life uh, has just been off the rails. Yeah, yeah. For nine months now, a couple yeah, know. a couple a couple months ago, I did the same thing, but my month was March. Right. Right. Um. Not we're not out of the woods yet, but uh, maybe the uh, maybe it maybe soon. Well, this is the thing. The thing is, uh, all of, I've taken I think... a lot of steps to ostensibly improve my situation, mm-hmm. 
And there, I'm happy with those steps. I'm happy that I did that. Yeah. I've taken those steps. I'm happy that I have like more people reading the stuff that I write now. I'm happy that I have a successful Patreon campaign. That stuff mm-hmm. is great. Do you want to put? A, also, do you want to give a link for that? For your patreoncom slash Austin Walker. Great. Uh, you can read the stuff that I write at ClockworkWorlds.com. That's where I put my Patreon posts. Um, and it's 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 a good thing that those things have happened. I think I'm doing fairly well at them. Yeah. Also, they cause me no end of stress. Right. Also, it's... at the end of the last month when I wasn't sure I had a Patreon post, I just, like, didn't sleep for a week. Uh, also, today, I had a, a freelance assignment uh, canceled at the last minute. Um, the last possible minute, and all I've done for the last three days is think about that freelance assignment instead of doing other freelance work, oh, instead of doing no. dissertation work, instead of doing, yeah. So I f- uh, yeah I feel like I feel like both of us are in a position where we've been taking drastic steps towards yes. uh, towards better shit and then yes. other things keep happening. Yeah, did I ever did I ever did I ever did we ever did I ever debrief you on the situation I informed you about of the interpersonal life situation mm-hmm. stuff? Uh you I you told me a ton about it once and I have not heard back. Oh dog, that shit blew up real bad. It was real I bad. heard you said that it blew up real bad. Do you want to talk about it? We could talk about it. I don't think I should talk about I it. I had a listen, I have some stuff planned. Uh-huh. We can talk about that. We can talk about this and if you think afterwards that no, no this is keep... not something that I want out there, right. I will delete it and right. we can just do the thing that I had planned. Oh man. Oh, so the thing is, I, I there is also a bit of karma here mm-hmm. in that in that I once maybe pressured you to have a conversation about some awkward things on a on a podcast. Yeah, I. But here and here's here's why I'm here's why I'm you know I have uh, I have one foot on the brake is that right. Uh, I feel like I am more equipped to just talk about fucking whatever. I'm pretty good at it. You're pretty pretty good. Well, so here's part of the thing. Okay. I think she might follow my Twitter now. Okay. She doesn't actually follow my Twitter, which is to say she doesn't have a Twitter. Okay. You know that she has your Twitter link and will just kind of read it. Well, my Twitter link is is out there. Right. If you do a search for Austin Walker Twitter, you're going to find it. Mm -hmm. One of the things she, she, God, one of the things she texted me a couple of, like, uh, uh, You're saying she noticed the tweet that you keep tweeting. About once a day, you tweet, wish I had anyone that wanted to be in a relationship with me. <laughs> right. It's weird. It's weird how no one wants me very much. <laughs> um, she she texted me a thing that was basically like, hey, I hope you know that you deserve to be happy and also you shouldn't let the internet get to you. And like, I don't do anything on Facebook, which is where she has me. She, right. she would have no idea that the internet is filled with assholes. She doesn't know that like, that like that stuff with Tevis Thompson happened a little while ago. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know that like all of the commenters on all of my GameSpot reviews are the worst. Oh god, uh, those are she really know bad. That, like gamer gators, or like she shouldn't know any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is why when she said like you deserve to be happy, and also I hope that the internet, like I hope you don't get devoured by the internet. I hope no one on the internet, like you shouldn't, you should let that stuff roll roll off your back. I was like, wait, how did you know? How do you know that there's anything happening did on the you, internet? Could you have maybe talked about it with her before? Never. You... I've never, no. Because no. you guys like work close together. All right, so so she and I share an office space. Right. Um, that we don't both normally use. An office except... space DVD. <laughs> right. Uh, here's the thing I did. Here's, okay. So there's this girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, she and Do you want to I... have a let's call her? What's a let's call her? Uh, where you where you have oh, a name right. that you say that isn't her name? Yeah, uh, let's call her Mamie. No, we're not <laughs> calling her, we're not calling her Mamie. There's still a few ways that could go. Let's call her Ronnie. Okay. <laughs> you have to bleep that out now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just. Uh, this is a girl named Amy. Okay. Who who I met um, who I met like a year and a half ago. I met in the fall of 2013. Thirteen, mm-hmm. um, and I was just like coming off of like some really terribly depressing shit. Like it had been like a, <laughs> it's been a long few years. Yeah, Keith. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I gotcha. <laughs> and and when I first met her, like I had a crush on her, and and we were we were vaguely flirty. Um, and I thought like, oh, I could date her. Like that seems like a thing I could do. And then over time, it became 
clear that I wasn't really in the market for a serious relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I did like was flirting with her and like being in the same room with her and making her laugh and like having each other's back in meetings and being able to hang out for an hour or two a week, like by because we were in the office at the same time. Right. Um, we're both grad students. Uh, she studies genocide. You know, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> genocide and museums. Um, and, and and museums. Oh, yeah, like kind of, kind of like the documentation and and archival of genocide. Okay, so um, it's it's genocide museums. It's not it's like... genocide museums. Well, it's a lot of museums. Sometimes they deal anyway. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, over time, what kind of happened was, I I realized, I realized that like the world, which is to say, like the small grad, the social, the social group of our of grad students, kind of like thought of it as a pres- as almost like a presumed finality that i would date her right that like it's like oh i'm supposed to date amy like this is the thing that's supposed to happen Mm -hmm. and as that was happening i also realized like no i kind of don't want to like i don't i'm happy with the situation i have now i have all these other social social um connections that i have i don't want to let any of those go also i'm a fucking mess i'm like an emotional wreck Uh, i have i have serious anxiety i've been battling depression for years um, and that stuff's great. I'm not saying that people who do who have those things cannot be in relationships and be happy and and good. Um, but I wouldn't be able to be happy with myself in the way that I'd handle a relationship while I'm in this kind of emotional state right now. Right. Um, and so what I did was I spent like a year making sure that she and I were never drunk together, um, okay. or that like making sure. Did like, that take I'd a lot of her. effort? Yeah. All right. It, it meant like. It meant like oh yeah I'll go out to that to that you know, someone's graduation ceremony or someone's like, they've successfully defended their master's thesis, but then I'll leave before either of us gets buzzed, you know? Right. Um, or, Can I tell you this? Or, defending your master's thesis sounds way more interesting than it probably is. It sounds, um, it sounds all, it sounds like, like medieval. It basically is. There is a goblet at the end. I mean, we have a friend who's about to do it and uh, her, her, after she's done, I mean, what happens is after you're done, you get to drink from the goblet of knowledge. It's, no. A hundred percent real. 100%. That sounds like that fucking... That sounds like that British thing that where there's a new prime minister, he has to like have the queen surrender to him. Yes, exactly. Well, here's God, the, the, here's the worst best. thing is like there's a special goblet. It's under glass in the like grad the grad club. One, it's called oh, the grad club. God. But two, there's secretly three goblets just in case someone ever graduates. More like a bunch of people defend their theses at, at, on the same day, um, which is hilarious. So, anyway, so so but in general, I just kind of like manage our relationship in a way so that like so that nothing can ever be confirmed or denied. Right. I mean, there's a nice position of plausible deniability where we get to be flirty and we get to be supportive and we get to to kind of like have that part of the of of attraction without falling into this other shit. Mm-hmm. Um, which again, I have no problem with with actual relationships. I'm just not in that place right now. Uh, and and it's it would be it would be bad for her and me. Also, we're both like applying to jobs halfway across the country in different countries. Like, right. this isn't this is not the year to start a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe when you first met her. Right when I first met her is when I should have made a move for sure. Like that would have been a completely different situation. Right. Um, but I didn't, and and that's okay. You know. Mm-hmm. So, so a couple so a month ago, uh, we both end up going to a kind of like TA uh, union event which has an open bar and also like no TA showed up to it. So we had like a billion extra drinks on our thing, which was a bad idea. I just got very drunk. We both got very drunk um, and I was hilarious uh, and, and she laughed a lot and we made fun of people like you do. Mm -hmm. Um, And towards the very end of the night, there was finally like a sort of like, like what are we what the fuck are we doing like is this a thing there's a thing right there's a thing right mm-hmm. and i was like yeah there's definitely a thing and she's like so like what are, what are we doing and i said i don't know i don't know and then i had to kind of a get out of jail free card because a friend of ours was in, in from out of town and was crashing at her place so that was like well i gotta go like you guys gotta head back to your place like i whew, i get out of here without having to commit to anything right uh without making any sort of like decisions that that i wouldn't make under under more sober circumstances the next morning i met up with her for brunch and we had another talk about it and i laid out all the reasons why i'm like eh, i don't know and she was like okay well you gotta let me know and i said well, let me think about it um 
let me this is on saturday this is on a saturday right. i was like uh at first i was like i'll tell you by friday and she was like no i was like i'll tell you by monday she's like okay then on sunday she texted me and was like no i can't wait you have to we have to have this talk and i was like all right fine at this point i think i've, I've still i think you've heard through this at least this is right? this is up to where i've heard yeah right we then met that night that's that like that sunday night and i was like ah uh, ooh, you see no i this isn't gonna work um and she was upset, but like she lived, you know. Um, and then I saw her the next day because we have our because January Austin thought it would be cute if we had fucking office hours at the same time, so I would definitely see her once a week. Right. Fuck January Austin. January Austin was an idiot. I thought well, that. Was, oh, dirt, what you know what? Dummy. I don't want to. I don't listen. No offense to him, yeah. but. During January, I was thinking, this is the worst Austin I've met. Yeah, and well, you didn't even know about this decision, but you could tell. I could tell. I was in like, something's general, off. January something's Austin right. was just, he was wearing, he was a mess. Yeah. So, next day, we have our office hours together, and it's a mess. And it's just like, this is terrible. Um, and then at the very end, she basically says, she basically says, like, listen, she says, like, quote, I don't want to be that stupid girl. And I was like, no, you're not being that stupid girl. That's not a thing. Stop it. Don't beat yourself up over this. She says, but you know, I'm not closing this door. Like, I'm not saying I'm not trying to pressure you into doing anything, but think about it. I'm going to be real busy over the next week. I'll see you next Monday. Let me know what you think. Um, and also kind of insinuated that she that she loved me. Oh, like, no, what this is up to was, where I've heard. I've heard up to this. <laughs> right, because what she said was like, I hate you. And I said, you hate me? Well, you said I just thought we were okay. She says I hate you, but in the but not in that way. I, I hate you in the sense that it's the opposite of hate. In the in the, it's the thing I can't say. And I said, oh, there's uh, that's not even an insinuation. That's literally yeah, literally like that. She, minded like, that was a fucking told me she lo- she right. like yeah, hate that, over yeah, X solve for X Austin. That yeah yeah, <laughs> which doesn't count. Like that that should still right. be. Like if what she had said that was wasn't like, even, that's not even I'm algebra. That's so like that you're... pre-algebra order of operations. Like that was some PEMDAS shit. Yes. If so, she had said like, Austin, you're currently living and tomorrow you won't be because of me, I could go to the police. Right? Like that's the sort of, that's a threat. Yes. That is a threat. It's absolutely, yeah. No, so, she, she was asking, yeah, she was definitely asking you to multiply before subtract. <laughs> so that week goes by. She texts me a few times during the week. Her mom is in from out of town. They're like super busy. There, she's in Toronto for a few days. But she texts me a few times to be like, "Hey, how's it going? Like, I'm sorry that I'm texting you." And I'm like, "Don't fucking worry about your. It's okay. You're allowed to text me." She's like, "Okay, but uh, I still have feelings. There, there are feelings happening." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, like I understand." Like, okay, so let me be clear too. At no point is this like. I don't like this girl. None of this is like right. Austin. Well, you're, you're is saying is that you this like girl. this girl, but it's not a healthy thing it's, to, to. It's not to the do. time for it. Right. It's not. I don't. I don't have the the emotional capacity right now. Right. To commit to something like that, and it would it would lead to like lots of heartbreak and anxiety. Yeah. Uh, um, on top of that, you're a busy bee. Right. I'm like in, I'm super busy. Like this is the first time I haven't been doing a thing that you could consider working in weeks. Mm-hmm. In weeks, right? I know you know what that's like, right? So, um, so, oh yes, sorry, I I zone out for a second. I exactly know what that's like. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Not that this this is also working for you. Oh in yeah, a sense. I have been working. I have been working on this I'm for two straight days, giving you a professional favor that I hope will be repaid one day when I run my own podcast mm-hmm. called uh, What's the name of this podcast again? How are you today? No, no, sorry. That's the name of my podcast. What's the name of this podcast again? How are you today? What's the name of this podcast again? I oh, sorry, Austin. How are you today? <laughs> oh, and no one's here to ruin this bit. It's amazing. Yeah, it's yep. It's weird. <laughs> Is there a, such a thing as a subtweeting and just regular conversation? Is that a thing? Right, Sub talking. So, Sub talking, or is that, talking... is that or is that pre lingual communication? Is that what sub talking? <laughs> I think is? that's yeah. Sub talking is that thing that like like Solid Snake can do. No one can hear him because he has like one of those mics. Yeah, fucking fuck. Yeah. 
Did you say the, fucking flak cannon? <laughs> I don't think that's a thing know. Solid Snake I, has ever I, said. That was a noise that Vin Diesel made in the Fast movie that I watched I, with yes. Ali. Yes, you mentioned that on a recent Run Button video. Yeah. You can find all the great Run Button stuff at contentburger.biz. You should support them. Um, that was <laughs> Vin Diesel's a big Run Button fan. He loves He might, he's be. A, he he's, might be. He might be. He's a nerd. He is a nerd. He is a goof geek. Um, so the next Monday comes, and and she shows up, and I don't even remember how this like kicked off, but it was basically you know it was our office hours again. She came in, closed the door, sat down, and it was just like, so what do you think? And me repeating all the same stuff, and her basically saying this is ridiculous. Like there is no reason for us not to date each other. I, and I was. I had been like slowly breaking apart on this. I'd very, yeah. very slowly been like being worn down. One to where thing that you I said was... to me before this, but in between right. this part of the story and when, like, well, I think it was like the day after that she basically told you she mm-hmm. she math loved you. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you said that you were worried about eventually cracking, Just cracking. Yeah, right. Um, and this was like the closest I'd been because it, you know what she basically said was like, listen, one, how do we even know? that this is going to work like we're both treating this as if as if this is a high stakes like deep relationship thing right who knows like we go out we we could have no chemistry Mm -hmm. two uh, she's like i'm busy too i'm a very busy person i don't know that that you know i'm not here to demand anything like i'm not high maintenance this could be just like a really nice light thing um and so finally i was like accepting her words a little bit more right and like disregarding my intuition and my intuition was like the reason she admitted that she was into me was because like the way she did that was by saying i'm really sad that you're gonna move away soon and like that's the worst that okay this is high stakes like you're already sad that i'm leaving you Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're not even dating so this is going to be a big high and i know how i feel about her so i was like oh okay this is gonna be an intense thing right so i uh, I, I, there's also uh, on some level austin are the the idea that maybe you're the same type of person where a relation just you being in a relationship makes it a high stakes thing right right like i i can i can conceive of being in a low stakes casual relationship not with her and not with anybody that i'm like actually deeply attracted to do you know what i mean like yeah. part of being deeply attracted for me is this like push it's about like oh i just i really like spending time with you yeah, like i yeah. just want to spend why, time yeah, with like you yeah like why would i not be walking forward right exactly so um so that conversation is like two hours long on this. This is like the third Monday or whatever. That is a and long, can I say that is a long conversation? It is a long conversation. And it's like lots of back and forth and lots of like awkward me, like holding my head in my arms and like, ah, like making noises, like completely vulnerable and uh, naked. God, um, this is a Vin Diesel convo. Yeah, it was a complete, it was a complete diesel con. <laughs> uh, and by the way, tickets available now, diesel con 2016. <laughs> Oh wow, they're like a year in advance because that's oh, not until December. He's a very big right now. <laughs> so, um, so that conversation eventually gets to like me saying no again, her saying like, "Are you sure?" Me saying, "All right, fuck it, let's go out. Let's go out next week. Let's go out. Like this is let's yeah. I'm being ridiculous. I'm being silly. Let's just go out. Let's I fun. absolutely let's go. have not heard this part. Yeah, you haven't." And then she says, like, are you sure? And I go, no, Uh, I'm not sure. Like, I'm never going to be sure. Like, this is the thing you need to understand about about dating someone with an anxiety disorder who has been battling depression for a long time is that every day I struggle to see a human. Like, I struggle to get out of bed and go Mm -hmm. into the world. And I've gotten really good at it compared to where I was at a few years ago. Yeah. I've I've developed healthy practices. I've learned how to manage that. I've learned how to like how to engage socially in the ways that I feel comfortable and safe at doing. Um, but there is no one in my life, basically, basically, no one in my life where it's not like, okay, am I ready to talk to that person? Right. Or where I'm not like today isn't a day that I can talk to that person. And so I'm never going to be sure that I'm going to go out with her. Like, it could be the day of, and I could have a panic attack and have to not do it. And so I basically explained to her, like, this is what it would be like to to date me. Is like, this is this is the sort of, like, uncertainty you have to come to terms with. Um, and if you want to date that, then that's fine. That's great. Like, okay, let's go. Like, that's, let's do it. If you're If you're willing to say that. And... I think that that put the ball back in her court a little bit 
and forced her to confront the reality of what she was asking for. Um, I think that's like my read on the situation because she got like fairly angry. Also, I just remember I skipped a big thing. We kissed. We kissed. Uh, okay. Before that, this. Oh, you that skipped a like skipped. a fucking really big thing. Yeah. Next thing kissed. you know, you're working at Starbucks. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's a big time leap. I don't. Everything's all over the place. <laughs> that is. By the way, that is a really good callback to anybody who listened to the Andy Short part of this. Oh boy. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. It's a joke uh, for only me and the future listeners. <laughs> And Andy, Andy's not going to listen to this. Andy's not going to listen to this. Are you fucking kidding me? He'll tell you he's going to listen to this, then yeah. he just won't. That's how Andy <laughs> Short does. He'll promise you. He'll, it's like, I can't listen to it right now, but I'll, I'll listen to it a little later. Yeah. I to can listen fair, to it he, for like an hour later up. than everybody else. That's amazing. It was amazing. I was amazed. So so we kissed at the point. I, we kissed in between these two moments. I basically had said, fine, let's go out. And I was like, uh, noises. And, and I said, like, She's like, are you? Sh-? She was like, are you sure? Like, do you are you even into me? Like, do you even have any? Are you actually attracted to me at all? I was like, yeah, it would be great to kiss you right now, but that'd be a real terrible idea. And she's like, why would it be a terrible idea? And I said, like, well, it would it would make things way more serious. Like, it would immediately make like a real physical material like stakes and just you know from something that's mm-hmm. only and I don't mean only in a in a pejorative way, but like currently solely emotional and mental. There would be suddenly this added material like right. weight, this anchor. It would anchor those feelings. And she was like, so? And I was like, all right, fine. Okay. And then we kissed. And it was, it was a good kiss. Uh, and then I said, and then she said, all right, so are you sure you want to go out next week? And I said, no. And then everything just fell apart. And it was like just death glares. Just like she couldn't, she, I don't think, when it was my decision alone, I, it was very easy for her to work through that. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and when I kind of said like, yeah, okay, but. Here's what here's what that scenario looks like, and it looks like you having to help me manage this anxiety, and you needing to be like ready for me to bail on every little thing, and and yes, me being stressed about talking to you, like you're going to be an added bit of stress in my life. Like that's just how it's going to be. That's not a it's not a personal judgment. It's just like that's how my life is. Um, and and stormed out, and it was really explosive and bad, and like. Uh, there were some tears. Uh, there was no yelling, but there was lots of like, there was lots of like, I have to leave this room or else we're going to start yelling. Right. Sternness. Um, yes. She has since kind of fallen into a holding pattern of like, of like shit I did when I was like 19, like shit I did from like 17 to 25, let's say. Okay. Which is like. What if we're just really good platonic friends, and then I can just squirm my way into your life? Um, she she offered to bring me soup yesterday. Like she's like, I know. Well, hold how on much... now, what kind of soup? She didn't say, which is a shame. Yeah. Also, she wanted to bring it to me at a Starbucks where I was working. No, I I mean yes, I was doing work at yeah. a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You weren't making one hundred twenty degree lattes. I wasn't doing that. I was I was typing about Rainbow Six Siege, um, but I was I was at a Starbucks that was nowhere near her, mm. uh, so she couldn't bring me hot soup. Right, um, which I don't think was a euphemism. That I think no, no, no. Grand Theft Auto was a different game. She did say that she wanted to pl- bring. She said she wanted to platonically bring me some soup. That's so, a... <laughs> um, what so yeah, was the soup? Just... What is the soup that would make you say yes to that? To dating her? <laughs> no, to having her bring it to you. Oh, like any soup. Like, if I was just closer, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll take your soup. Okay. I'm not anti-soup. Like, this is the thing. No, but I, I'm assuming oh, so the, the, soup, the soup leads to that now you're hanging out. She's yeah. not just going to bring the soup. Here, I'm half an hour. I drove half an hour. Here's the soup. I'm out. The places that she would have gone to would have been closer than half an hour, so it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. Like, I, it wouldn't have been that big of a time. I don't think. I don't know. Anyway, the, right. the point is, the point is that now she's in the zone where, like, she just wants to be my buddy. But I know what that move is because I've done that move and I hate myself for having done that move for years and years and years. And, like, 
it's really hard to at, on one hand like i like spending time with her like i said like i like hearing someone say something ridiculous and terrible and then giving her a look and then she falls to pieces and laughter publicly like that's a great feeling like yeah just like that's boom instant communication which is my favorite goku technique mm-hmm. and and then like laughter like i bleh, as someone who does jokes you understand that like bleh, that's a good feeling yeah um so so i would like to have a friendship with her but like one of the one of the big things I've learned over the last decade is like, oh, it's totally chill to have like friends who are not my gender, and like that's okay. It's okay that that doesn't ever resolve into a relationship. In fact, it's even okay that being that having mutual attraction doesn't resolve into a relationship. Like for years, if you told me that, oh, like you're you're into this girl, and then like she's into you, that's enough for a relationship. Like, that's the basis for a relationship. Mm -hmm. And, like, it turns out that, like, nah, there's, like, a billion other factors that, like, mutual attraction just isn't enough. For instance, if I was already in a relationship (laughs) and met someone who was into me and who I was attracted to, that relationship wouldn't happen. That is, yeah, that is a, that is a, that is the baseline example, right? Exactly. That anyone can see, probably. Hopefully, right. Um, and and one of the time, other things being that both of you are looking for jobs halfway across the country, halfway across the country, or in a right. different country. That's a, that's a harder one to grasp than one, I is. already have a person. And I think the seeing. hardest one is it's that that attraction doesn't have to be consummated for it to be valuable, right? right. That like. It's nice to. Uh, we were just talking to a friend of ours, Will, about this the other day. That like a crush is a really nice thing, mm-hmm. so long as it's a healthy crush where your your behavior isn't like gross and creepy. Right. Um. Like it, it's it's totally okay. Attraction is pleasurable when you let it be and when you don't get caught up in how can I consume this person? How can I reduce this person into a something that fits nicely into my life? Mm-hmm. And if you can if you can explore that level of attraction. And that kind of relationship openly without it being a power bar that you're eating. <laughs> right. Right. Then then you're then that's great. Um, but it's really hard to communicate that to someone like it's really hard to communicate some, to someone like, no, like, I think our relationship is best if we just flirt like for 30 minutes a week. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. yeah. OK, good. And I have which is nuts. Like, I get it. Like, that's not. How anyone, no one's taught us that that's how we do things. I have a friend who, who I see every time I'm in New York and, and like real talk every time I see her, it's like the best first date ever. That's the whole of our relationship. It's just like we go out to dinner and to the park into a movie and like are hilarious and great together. And that's it. It's never going to be anything else. Mm -hmm. Right. And like that's it, it for a long time, I was super resentful of that and have since become like, Oh, this is great! Like this—that's a really cool experience to have access to, like, right. and that I can count on, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't have to be this other thing, and that's—that's—it's tough, I think, to learn that because we don't have many examples of of good platonic uh, hetero friendships, you know. Yeah, it, the, the, I mean, and there's also something to be said for, as someone with uh, like who is facing anxiety just yes. daily. To, mm-hmm. to just be able to have someone that you know the status of, right. like this is the this is the way yes. that this plays out, and yes. I like the way that it plays out, yep. and I can I can use what I learn here other places. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like I don't have to. This isn't. I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm not trying to turn this into a thing that it right. can't be, and also I'm not like I'm not. Ruining this other person's life by mm-hmm. bringing them into mind, which right, is a right, mess yeah. right and now. And I, again, I, it's I, not I, a general I, judgment. I'm not generally saying that no one with anxiety, with an anxiety disorder, should enter into a relationship or anything like that. Like, mm-hmm. just like I know where I'm at right now. I know what's working for me in managing my own anxiety. Yeah. Um. And and yeah. I also I want to make it clear that I'm not. I don't want. I don't want to reduce anyone to a learning experience to use on other right. people. Right. But like, a, as someone who also has a lot of anxiety, it's good to have people that like. It's it's good to have. Every time I interact with somebody, it or maybe like a few years ago when I was way worse at talking to people, mm-hmm. every time that I talked to somebody and it worked, that was me learning how to be a better right regular yeah, person. Absolutely, absolutely. There was a there was a, a bit on Radio Lab or This American Life or one of those other like prestige public radio uh, podcast shows mm-hmm. um, that was about a dude who who. He, I don't know if he like got a divorce or uh, I forget the setup, but he like needed to learn how to be rejected, and so or, like how to deal with rejection. 
so that he would be more able to get then put himself out there without having to be really anxious about the risk of it. And what I ended up doing was just like every day he would ask people to let him do something like, hey, can you or like, hey, can you give me a ride home like from Walmart? Or like, hey, can I take a picture with you? Just like asking like a billion different little things that that would in, let him face rejection over and over again. Right, yeah. So that he could like kind of acc- acclimatize. What's the word I'm looking for? Acclimate. Uh, acclimate himself. Not acclimatize. That's right. not a thing. <laughs> that, sounds like a, that sounds like a weird hybrid fruit. <laughs> it is. Mm. Do you have an acclimatine? <laughs> yeah, I'd love an acclimatine. That's... It's, it's a clementine season right now, you know. It's everyone's uh, very It's festive. a naturally skinless orange is what an acclimatine uh, is. That sounds really <laughs> gross to me. It's just the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and I feel like that's that's definitely part of the way that I, I've been able to help you know, manage my own relationships and, and also become more sociable and stuff. Is like, hey, like, what are the ways that I work well with people here? What are the ways in which I can extend this sort of behavior into new new relationships? Um, I, I can be confident that this that this sort of relationship has worked in the past or that this sort of exchange has worked in the past. That means I can move forward and do it. And it's, it's one of the reasons I like streaming stuff online. It's one of the reasons I like doing bits like this. Yeah. Uh, is because like, or it's, and it's also one of the reasons I can do bits like this is because like, oh, right, it's Keith. Keith and I have done these things before. I can mm-hmm. talk to him about whatever. It's going to be fine. We're going to be pretty funny. It's going to be kind of insightful or whatever. Yeah. And, and we'll be fine. Um, whereas like if you were just said like, hey, Austin, would you like to start a podcast with me? Right. I'd be like, uh, uh, I don't know. Right. And the I thing. I don't think that that's a thing I can do. <laughs> no, I, I, I understand how busy you are. I would not ask you to start a podcast like, here's with Here's the thing me. is, I would be on every one of these episodes with you. Right. As long as you didn't then say, Austin, you're on this podcast with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get that's it. The, I, that's there's, the there's commitment There's a huge thing. difference there. Yeah, there is. Um. There's yeah, which is also why in the pitch when I said, "Do you want to be on this thing?" I I also said, "Uh, five to ten minutes," and it's right. been half an hour it's because you came in and you offered more of a thing. I had a thing. It turned out. It right. Turned out. Yeah. And so now now I have now I have this other thing in the pocket that I can use another place because frankly it is out of place after this conversation. Are you sure you don't want to just bust it out? You don't. Wanna... We can you 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 can you and I can go over it. Uh, and see if it's as strong a bit as I think it is after we're done here. Okay. Um, okay. Wait. Do you want to give your links out again? So yeah. Sure. You can find you me on Twitter at Austin underscore Walker. Find me on on Twitch. I guess. Who's listening to this? Is this comedy people or video game people? This is comedy people. I mean, it's a, I mean, ostensibly, it's it's run button listeners. Those are comedy people? No. Well, it's a comedy podcast, but the joke. people that are going to be at listening to this first That was are me the saying you're not very me. funny. That's hmm? what that I was saying you weren't very funny. That was oh, those, okay. That was a little jab. Oh, it felt a like a jab. It, did, it didn't feel like a jab, but now it feels like a jab. Now, for retroactively, it's one of those like, ooh, like you got hit and then you didn't feel yeah. it at first, but now, yeah. the, ooh, I'm a, little, I'm a little sore. I'm a little it's, sore. Yeah, it's the, it's the scene in anime when like three seconds later blood <laughs> spurts from my shoulder. Right. Uh,. Oh, I'm so close to remembering what he says. It's Omaiwa. I can't remember the rest of it. He says, you're already dead. But in Japanese. I don't remember how to say it. Anyway, Austin underscore Walker on Twitter. The Kalki Tech on Twitch. Streamfriends.tv for a lot of stuff. Uh, Keith is on a, a podcast already with me called mm-hmm. Friends at the Table. Friends at yeah. the Table dot net. Um, which, which it's is, really good. And we're like coming up on the season finale of our first season of it, so to speak. Yeah. Um, well, so we're coming up and recording it. It'll still be months before. Uh, we don't have that much left. It'll be a month. It'll be a month. Mm-hmm. It'll be a month or two. It'll be a month. I think by if, the end of May. If, 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 we're, if we're saying three episodes, that's at least a month and a half. What do you mean three episodes? If there's three episodes left? I, at one point no, you said are... that you wanted to get three episodes out of I don't the think, next session. I don't think we're going to. I think we're going to get two. Okay. We'll see. Anyway. Inside people Baseball. People should listen to that. Yeah, people should listen to Friends at the Table. That's the people next season. We're going to RPG Inside Baseball. <laughs> uh, like, we just keep going. We could just keep going. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Austin underscore Walker on Twitter is the big one. Clockworkworlds.com for my writing. Uh, you can also read stuff that I write at paste, pastemagazine.com slash games and over at gamespot.com slash reviews sometimes, mm-hmm. I guess. That's it, guys. I, I did it. I finished the podcast. It's over until the next episode that I do, and then it, as, or then it restarts. 
Um, the cycle begins anew. If I have my druthers, this is a podcast that will be coming out at least every other week. I'm going to try my hardest to make that. But it is a lot of work. It might end up coming out less than that. Or I'm going to aim for once every other week. Twice a month. Bi-weekly. Bi-weekly version 2. I couldn't have done this thing without help. Uh, thanks to Andy Short and Ali Akampora and Austin Walker for being my guests. You can find their respective Twitters at the real Andy Short, at Ali underscore West, at Austin underscore Walker. Thanks to special contributors Kyle Churchill at 19 Letters Long and Delilah Sinclair at Vorpal Femme. You can find me on Twitter at Keith J. Carberry. You can find the Let's Plays that I do at runbutton.net. You can find the music that I make at fuckdads.com. You can check out the Run Button Patreon at contentburger.biz. Um, and, you know, obviously if you listened to this and you don't listen or watch Run Button, uh, you should do that. But also, uh, if you're like, well, I don't, I don't truck with no Run Button, but I like this podcast throw a dollar in there anyway it gets to me it gets to me it does get to me it gets half to me um so that's it that's everything find something else to do see you in a couple weeks